Before Elvis, Little Richard, Chuck Berry, The Rolling Stones, The Beatles, Johnny Cash, and Eric Clapton, there was Sister Rosetta Tharp. Every time a rock musician plugs their guitar into an amplifier, the spirit of Sister Rosetta Tharp is stirred. The innovator of rock music, Sister Rosetta Tharp, was the precursor to the genre that would transform music and significantly influence many rock and roll legends to follow. Primarily known for singing and playing gospel, she was the first gospel performer to record for a major record label, becoming one of gospel music's first superstars in an early crossover from gospel to secular music. Her unique musicianship, guitar picking, powerful and charismatic stage presence is an inspiration to contemporary musicians, both religious and secular. Rosetta Thorpe was born in Cotton Plant, Arkansas on March 20th, 1915 to Katie Bell Newbin Atkins, an evangelist, singer, and mandolin player for the Church of God in Christ, and Willis Atkins, a farm laborer. She went by the first names Rosa, Rosietta, and Rosa Bell, and used both her father's last name and her mother's maiden name, Newbin. Rosetta began walking and talking before her first birthday and was musically gifted from an early age. Her father played the guitar and the harmonica, and her mother, a beloved member of the church community was referred to as Mother Bell. She played the piano and the mandolin. Both her parents taught her how to sing, and she started playing the guitar by age three and began performing at age four, playing the guitar and singing Jesus on the Main Line. By age six, she appeared regularly with her mother performing a mix of gospel and secular music styles that would eventually make her famous. As a youth, she could sing, keep on pitch, and hold medley. Her vocal qualities, however, paled beside her abilities on the guitar. She played individual tones, medleys, and riffs instead of just strumming the chords. This talent was all the more remarkable because at the time, few black women played the guitar. Her guitar style was influenced by her mother's mandolin playing and by pianist Arizona Drains. She also sang the popular hymns of the day, including the compositions of bluesman turned gospel musician, Thomas A. Dorsey. Indeed, elements of the blues are readily apparent in her guitar styling. Later, her music will be influenced by her work with jazz greats, Lucky Millinder and Cab Calloway. Billed as the singing and guitar playing miracle, she was an added attraction at her mother's church services. Both mother and daughter worked as members of an evangelistic trope that would work through the South before arriving in Chicago, Illinois in the late 1920s. There they became part of a growing holiness movement, a late 19th century offshoot of the Pentecostal denomination, which in the 1890s led to the formation of the Church of God in Christ, also known as Kojic, and other new religious groups. Her teenage years traveling with her mother to various cities to perform in chapels, churches, and revival groups earned Tharp nationwide celebrity in the church. On the advice of several Chicago promoters, she moved to Harlem, New York in the mid-1930s, where she affiliated with another church. In 1934, when Tharp was just 19 years old, her mother arranged a marriage to the pastor, Reverend Thomas Tharp. She worked with the church under her husband's direction for the next four years, but it is believed he possessed negative attitudes towards women and reportedly could not accept Tharp's desire to perform. The marriage did not last. When the marriage ended, she kept his name. When Tharp accepted a job at the prestigious Cotton Club in New York City, she found herself in a new realm of performance. Far from the gospel singing of the church, she was suddenly in show business and her church-going fans were not too happy about her transition. It was like a bomb had dropped on gospel music when she flipped, said Tharp's longtime friend, Ira Tucker Jr., in a PBS episode of American Masters. It was hurtful to a lot of people because they felt as though they had lost something. They had something and it was great, but now it was gone. They viewed it almost like a death. Tharp signed with the Decca label in 1938. Her first records, including Rock Me, which she recorded with Lucius Lucky Millinder's big band and This Train were instant hits. She frequently rearranged traditional spirituals such as Didn't It Rain and Down by the Riverside. 
Tharp found popularity among mainstream audiences and performed on bills with artists such as Cab Calloway, Bilbo Jangles Robinson, and Benny Goodman. She performed in legendary New York City venues such as the Cotton Club and Carnegie Hall. She led almost a schizophrenic existence, remaining in the good graces of her core audience by recording material like Precious Lord, Beams of Heaven, and End of My Journey, while also appealing to her white audience by performing rearranged up-temple spirituals. There's something about gospel blues that's so deep, the world can't stand it, Tharp reportedly said. In her biography, Shout, Sister Shout, the untold story a rock and roll trailblazer, Sister Zetta Tharp, Gail Ward describes the complexity of Tharp's music. It incorporated elements of gospel, blues, jazz, popular ballads, country, rhythm and blues, and rock and roll. Her finger-picking guitar style influenced Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Bonnie Raitt, and many others. Tharp is considered gospel's first crossover artist and the original soul sister. She is credited for boldly breaking spiritual music into the mainstream, but it wasn't until after the significant controversy surrounding her performance of I Want a Tall Skinny Papa, a song far removed from religious ideals that Tharp resolved to stick with gospel songs, giving them her unique upbeat interpretation and as a result was able to reclaim the support of her church-going fans. Breaking into a male-dominated industry, Tharp established herself as one of the most popular musicians of her time by the age of 25. Despite her training in religious music, which clearly favored singing for the Lord rather than the world, Tharp also embraced bits and pieces of secular society. She sang in clubs and theaters, invented pop gospel, became a household name, and everybody's sister. She performed during a unique musical era. When the electric guitar came to prominence, she took up the instrument although she also played the piano. She figured out ways to work a guitar, to bring an audience, even a huge stadium-sized audience to its feet, said Gail Ward in Sing Out. She was extraordinarily brave in the manner of Bessie Smith or Billie Holiday, women who also had to confront social condemnation for their social and musical choices. Tharp also dressed more like an entertainer than an evangelizing missionary. She typically dyed her hair, wore vivid wigs, and wore feathered bows and finery with her gowns. It was that smack of rent parties and honky-tonks. The 1940s were considered the golden era for gospel. Tharp's popularity was such that, during World War II, she and the Golden Gate Quartet were the only black gospel groups to record V-discs, recordings sent to American soldiers overseas. She continued to record for Decca and perform a collaborative relationship with Samuel Sammy Price, who was the label's staff, pianist, and arranger. They would work together until 1951. She also married Forrest Allen, a gospel booking agent, at some point during this decade. Tharp toured often and was accompanied by popular groups, including the Dixie Hummingbirds and the Jordanaires. Her performance with the Jordanaires, an all-white vocal quartet, defied convention at the time, but Tharp was known to be rebellious. She referred to us as her four little white babies, said Gordon Stoker of the group. The irony of being a star, but also subject to segregation, was one she expressed in her biggest hit, Strange Things Happening Every Day. She often slept on beds in her bus when touring and white musicians would have to bring food to her because she wasn't allowed inside hotels and restaurants. In the late 40s, Tharp formed a very successful and popular duet with a young gospel singer and pianist named Marie Knight. They played to large crowds and recorded hit versions of Up Above My Head, Didn't It Rain, and Beams of Heaven, among others. The two also became lovers, an open secret in a gospel world, until a fire in Newark, New Jersey, killed Knight's mother and two of her children. The grief and strain proved too much and the pair split as a duo in late 1950, though they would periodically reunite on stage and on record, including for the duet You Gotta Move, which highlights the gospel call and response technique that later emerged in soul music. In her 35-year career, Gail Wald states, Rosetta Tharp withstood failed marriages, personal disillusionment, 
volatile economic circumstances, racial discrimination, and rejection by her church. The woman who once owned two homes and a Cadillac and required a large shed to house all of her gowns was buried in an unmarked grave in Philadelphia. She pursued romantic relationships primarily with men but occasionally with women, wore pants before they were the norm for women, and swore like a sailor. She also maintained a lifelong affiliation with a church that regarded all of these behaviors as anathema. Tharp was married a third time to Russell Morrison, the former manager of the Ink Spots, in an elaborate ceremony in Washington, D.C. in 1951. The wedding was reportedly a publicity stunt. It was held in Washington's Griffith Stadium, with proceeds and recording rights going to Decca Records. Guests paid to attend, and the event, which featured a gospel concert after the vows, was also recorded and issued on vinyl. Gail Ward and American Quarterly pronounced the event as a failure as both a wedding and concert. Indeed, it offended precisely to the degree that it was both neither at the same time. This was purportedly Tharp's most successful marriage, but it was the end of her working relationship with Marie Knight, who felt snubbed when not asked to perform at the wedding, although she was a member of the wedding party. The marriage was not a smooth one, but they remained together for 22 years. Tharp toured extensively during the next several years. It took her to churches throughout the United States and then to Europe in the 1950s. She was the first gospel performer to tour Europe where she remained for nearly a year. As Lino George observed in the Los Angeles Times, as an African American, she was crossing color lines. As a woman, she was going places and performing in a fashion that had previously been unheard of not to mention making a mockery of the term ladylike. Tharp was a sanctified gospel singer who ladled up big servings of the blues and sang and raised many eyebrows doing so. In the early 1950s, Tharp decided to record several tracks of straight blues numbers. This outraged her gospel fans. Her credibility and popularity were seriously damaged. Not only did her record sales drop off, her live engagements became fewer and far between. But many purists took Tharp's foray into the mainstream as a personal affront. The situation did not improve, and she spent over a year touring clubs in Europe, waiting for the controversy to die down. At the same time, Tharp was leaving a deep impression on young musicians, her style cutting across color lines and musical genres. This included Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Jerry Lee Lewis, Johnny Cash, Sleepy LaBeef, and B.B. King. The situation had improved by 1960, and Tharp appeared in a prominent all-gospel concert at the legendary Apollo Theater on a bill with the Caravans and James Cleveland. By now, her voice had lowered an octave, and she chanted more than she sang. It made no difference, she continued to tour and performed at the prestigious Newport Folk Festival in 1967. At the age of 49, Tharp was still enjoying successful tours while performing in England in 1968. However, her mother Katie Bell died and the loss took a toll on Tharp. Despite this seemingly reversal of professional fortunes, the last seven years of Tharp's life were personally difficult. She became increasingly depressed and was also demoralized when diagnosed with diabetes, which she did little to treat. 1970, Tharp suffered a stroke but continued to tour. Complications from the stroke resulted in an amputation of a leg, but she continued to tour through early 1973. Eventually bedridden by the complications of diabetes, Tharp suffered another stroke. The queen of rock and roll, died at the age of 58 on October 9, 1973, at Temple University Hospital and is buried in Northwood Cemetery in Philadelphia. Tharp's memorial was paid for by fans decades after her death. Of her awards and honors, she was posthumously inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame in 2007. And in 2008, Pennsylvania Governor Rendell declared January 11th Sister Rosetta Tharp Day in honor of her legacy. She was inducted into the Arkansas Black Hall of Fame in 2012. 
In 2018, Sister Rosetta Tharp was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In 2020, she was honored with a Lifetime Achievement Grammy Award. Rosetta Tharp was the first nationally known gospel singer, the first gospel singer to record with a major company, the first to go public with gospel by performing on a secular stage, and the first to perform gospel in a theater. Childhood friend Roxy Moore said of Tharp, she would sing until you cried, and then she would sing until you danced for joy. She kept the church alive and the saints rejoicing. In the annals of music history, Sister Rosetta Tharp never got the attention she deserved. She propelled gospel music into the mainstream and laid the very foundation for which the legends of rock and roll stand. Her soul-moving, distinctive voice was the sound of gospel with a touch of the blues. Her mastery of the Gibson SG guitar with riffs on a level that rivaled and exceeded the best of her male contemporaries and her unconventional style made her a musical innovator. Her career, which spanned almost four decades, was grounded in both her confidence and the characteristic rawness she brought to her performances night after night. She was and is an unmatched artist. Sister Rosetta Tharp, queen of rock and roll and onyx queen. Above my head, I hear music in the air. Up above my head, there is music in the air. Up above my head, music in the air. And I really do believe, really do believe, joy somewhere. All in my room, music everywhere. All in my home, music in the air. Up above my head, that is music in the air. Well, 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 I really do believe, I really do believe joy somewhere. Up above my head, music in the air, music in the air. Up above my head, that is music in the air. Up above my head, that is music in the air. You know, I really do believe, I really do believe joy somewhere. All in my home, singing like that. Up above my head, and it's music in the air. You know I really do believe, I really do believe, joy somewhere. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh If you enjoyed this video, please share, like, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching.